Behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him, saying, Master, what shall we do to inherit eternal life? And he said unto him, What is written in the law, and how readest thou? And he answering said, Thou shalt love thy, the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind. And thy neighbor as thyself. And he said unto him, Thou hast answered right, this do, and thou shalt live. Go ahead, I'm going on the way to verse 37. But he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, And who is my neighbor? And Jesus answering said, A certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho, and fell among thieves, which stripped him of his raiment. And wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. And by chance there came down a certain priest that way. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. And likewise a Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was. And when he saw him, he had compassion. On him. And he went to him and bound up his wounds, pouring in oil and wine. And set him on his own beast. And brought him to an inn. And took care of him. And on the morrow. When he departed. He took out two pens. And gave them to the host. And said unto him. Take care of him. Whatsoever thou spendest more. When I come again. I will repay thee. Which now of these three. Thinkest thou. Was neighbor unto him that fell among the thieves. And he said, he that showed mercy on him. Then said Jesus unto him, go and do thou likewise. The Lord bless his word in Jesus' name. Very quickly we are speaking on the principle and power of love. The principle and power of love. Our objective to today is to understand the, the ma understand major principles of loving. And second, to understand a major benefit of love. By way of introduction, I'm going to say three things. Number one, that love is the nature and character of God. Is the nature, is the character of God, because God is love, according to First John, chapter four, and in verse eight, love. He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. Number two. The earth was created by love. And is meant to be operated by love. Created by love, meant to be operated by love. If the Bible said, God is love, and in the beginning God created the earth, it means in the beginning love created the earth. If God is equal to love, love created the earth. And is meant to be operated by love. Thirdly, man was created in the image and likeness of love to exist and function as a loving being. Man was created in the image and likeness of love to exist and function as a loving being. Genesis chapter 1 verse 28. 
if God is love and God made man in his image, verse 27, if God is love and God made man in his image, it means man was created in the image and likeness of love. Image and likeness of love. So he can function as a loving being. Having said all of this, there is one more, two more things to say. And that is, thought. The earth malfunctions. Because it attempts to function outside of his creative format. The earth, this earth malfunctions. When you realize the level of wickedness in the earth and lovelessness, you will be able to understand why this earth is absolutely malfunctioning. Why things are happening upside down because the earth was formatted for love. You know how a computer system is formatted? Formatted for love. Finally, man under leaves, maybe it's my coinage under leaves, living under its potential, under leaves and misleaves. As he attempts to live outside his nature. Man underlives and misleaves. Because people attempt to live outside their nature. And the nature of man is the nature of love. Is God speaking to anybody here? Say amen. So now this will open our eyes. To the reason why there are so many things in our world we don't understand. And if you look at this world today, the level of lovelessness, the level of wickedness, the level of selfishness, you will understand why the whole world is upside down. Because it is functioning outside of format. It's functioning outside of guidelines. Is functioning, it's like a computer system crashing or a system just imploding when it begins to behave in a function in an environment it's not meant for. Am I communicating? The story of the Good Samaritan, we have been reading it since Sunday school. The first person that passed was a priest who is meant to be like a pastor. He looked the other way. It's not his concern. Supposing he tries to help him and they implicate him. And they say he was the one who killed, who wounded the man. <laughs> Is that not the kind of world we live today? Supposing I try to help this man and they say I'm the, I'm the one. Let me just mind my business. The next one who came was a Levite. That is church worker. Priest, Levite. He looked the other side. The third person that came is Samaritan. That is in fact, a non-covenant person. You remember when Jesus was put to pass through Samaria, the disciples were concerned that the Jews have no dealings with Samaritan. It was a Samaritan, a stranger to the covenant that saved the man's life. We'll leave that detail for another day. But the question right now is, what is love all about? And as I talk about what love is all about, it is giving you an idea, a clue, as to what your life is meant to be all about. Number one. Love is about treating others. How you would love to be treated. Treating others. How you will love to be treated. Whatsoever you want that men do to you, do to them. Matthew chapter 7 verse 12. Was therefore all things whatsoever you would 
that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. If you were a wife as a man, how would you love your husband to treat you? Treat your wife like that. If you were a husband, what level of respect would you like your wife to give you? Give your husband such. If you were an employee, how would you love your boss to treat you like, like if you are a boss, treat your employees like that? If you are a boss, how would you love your employees to treat you? Treat your boss like that. If you are a leader, how would you want your followers to treat you? Treat your leader like that. If you are a follower, how would you want your leader to treat you? Treat your followers like that. If you are injured and you are on the road like this man, what do you expect people to do for you? To walk and pass? No. You expect people to stop and attend to you and rescue you from death. So stop and rescue this person. It is treating people. Whatever is good for the goose, they say is good for the gander. Whatever. It is treating people the way you would love to be treated. Very simple. What is love about? Number two. Love is about possessing a healthy consideration for the feelings, emotions, and hearts of others. It is possessing a healthy consideration for the feelings, emotions, and hearts of others. You feel what others feel. In, in your actions, you put human feelings into consideration. You put human emotions into consideration. There are those today who are hardened against the feelings of others. Hardened against the feelings of their fellow man. Hardened against the feelings of their wives, husbands. What will pain you will pain him. What will embarrass you will embarrass him. What, 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 what will humiliate you will humiliate him. The feelings of others. People are killers because they have no concern for the feeling of anybody. He killed the man and he doesn't care what the, what the, the, the wife will feel or what the mother will feel or what the friends of the, man, of, of the man will feel or what the relations will feel or the dependence of this man. What he has done, he doesn't care. He does, all he wants is they paid him a little money as he hired as a sin. Or he's a, 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 a dealer in human spell pass, spell pass, called himself a ritual killer or a kidnapper or whatever. No human feeling. Dead to feelings. That's why our world is upside down. Because the, the framework for the creation of this world is not be followed. What I'm saying now, you don't need to go too far. Start from where you are. The feeling of those closest to you. At times I'm in the car, I'm about to take something, maybe I haven't eaten since morning, and maybe I'm, it's about one o'clock, or maybe it's about two o'clock, maybe it's about three o'clock, or something. And I'm, and I, and, I, and I, at times when your schedule is so, is so congested, you, 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 you walk as you run, you run as you walk, you pray as, you do everything all the and I'm about to eat something in the car. And I say, excuse me, driver, have you eaten today? He said, yes, so I have eaten today, I have eaten breakfast, I have eaten lunch. He said, okay, sorry, I'm about to take something. Because the smell might affect you while I'm, while you are driving. So that it doesn't look like I'm oppressing you. you. Say, oh no, sir, I've taken something, I'm full already. Am I communicating? There are those who will be traveling from here to, to Lagos. They are eating, uh, what do you call it now? KFC or whatever they are eating. The only thing the driver is benefiting is salivation. Salivation. He's swallowing saliva from the, from here all the way to Lagos. Driver, have you eaten? Have you drunk? Nothing because he's not a person. He's not a person. He's not a person. He's not a person. Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? 
if you can put the feelings of others, the emotions, the hearts of others into consideration. That is love. That's what love is all about. Number three, that was what the, the, the Samaritan did for this man. Number three, love is about the maintenance of goodwill and kind heartedness towards others. Goodwill. 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 That is, I wish you well. May it be well with you. Goodwill. There are those whose, whose minds are filled with bad will. If you are not looking depressed, it's a challenge to them. If you are not looking harassed, it's a pain to their heart. If you are looking pitiable and harassable, then you, 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 you draw their attention. Oh, how are you? It is well. Don't be sad you hear. Uh, things will get better. But if you are excited and exuberant and a fever scent and explosive and you are just moving about full of life, they look at, look at him. It will not last. It will, whatever it is will not last. That is how, that is how, that is how the thing just, just, no, forget about it. Amen. We have seen people come like this and they have gone. There are people, you see, we, we live in Africa where there is a lot of witchcraft and witchcraft is nothing but Wishes that are crafty. Crafty wishes. We live in a crabological society. A crabological world. You know what I mean by that? If you put crabs, 100 crabs, inside a basket, you don't need to cover the basket. You don't, don't cover the basket because no crab will go out. None. If one is climbing out, 99 will hold his leg. Pull it back. In other words, where are you going? We are all here together. In English, the process is called crabology. In my language, it is called opricality. <laughs> eh? Yes, that's, that's what is called in my language, oblicality. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here today? Bad wishes. What you don't like, you must lack. What you don't celebrate, you will never attract. Don't be unhappy with good things. Even if it is not yet happening with you, celebrate it for it to happen for you. Anywhere you see good things, anywhere you see nice things, anywhere you see something that looks like this is of God, be happy with it. Am I communicating at all? You know, that is why the majority of the things that sell in our generation is bad news. You ask some, some journalists, why are you pushing this kind of news? They say, oh no, good news does not sell. People want to know who died or who fell or who got destroyed or who got cancelled. There's something they call today cancel culture. Where they say, oh, just pick up a person and everybody tell a lie about him and then, and let, and let the lie be so notorious that it looks like true. Then you delete him from relevance. That's the wicked world we live in. You may not have anything to give to people, but wish them well. Life is a seed. What a man sows, he reaps. He said, give and it shall be given to you good measure. Press down, shaking together. Running over shall men give to you. Give people goodwill. Goodwill will return. Give them bad will. Bad will will return. They are showing us clicality up there. Do you see? One of them is trying to go out. See the others pulling his leg. 
They are climbing up. See, this one, this one that is not even close to the leg is stretching his hand to pull it. Take your seat. Take your seat. He doesn't, he doesn't, he doesn't do you anything. See, no star is shining at the expense of another star. No eagle is flying at the expense of another eagle. Nobody's success is the reason for another person's failure. You know, when three people take first in a class and they all have the same mark, they won't say the other person is number two. The only challenge is the next person that is coming. If there are five people and they took, and they all got 99, 99, 99, 99, all the five is first, 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 first. Only the next person becomes number six. Because five took first. The first of the other of this one is not faster than this one. I'm sure that teachers know what I'm talking about. This is what love is all about. It is the maintenance of goodwill. There are people you pass, they squeeze their face. They are permanently angry with they are they are quarreling with their own lives. What is love all about? Wish your husband well, wish your wife well, wish your friends well. What is love? Somebody told me a story one day. He told me about a particular pastor, man of God, somewhere around the world, about a particular challenge the man had. And the challenge was a terrible challenge that was going to bring some bad news or something. And he told me about it and he was saying it. And this person was also like a pastor or something. And he was saying it very light and almost, I don't know how, whether he was excited. You, I don't know what he wants to hear from me. And I say, oh, what a waste. I said, this is a divine investment that the devil is about to waste. And I smoned, and I prayed, and I groaned. I said, sir, it takes God a lot to prepare one genuine man. And then you are telling me that this guy is just about to crash like that. Oh, Lord! That man said, that statement changed his mentality. He said that reaction changed his orientation. And he prayed. That man is, is fully on his feet. The devil failed. And that man is doing exploits for the kingdom, breaking territories by one reaction. Don't let people bring bad news to you and you celebrate it. There is nothing you gain because somebody went down. Am I communicating? That somebody went down does not automatically mean you are going up. Where you are is where you will remain. And for celebrating it, God may push you down further. Hallelujah. Look at what the Bible said in the book of Galatians chapter 6 verse 1. It said, Brethren, if a man be overtaken in a fault, you which are spiritual, jubilate. You which are spiritual, gossip about it. You which are spiritual, discuss it everywhere. You which are spiritual, post it on, on social media posts. You which are spiritual, restore such a one in the spirit of meekness, considering yourself, because you too, wahala fideo, lest thou also be tempted. What is love all about? Love. It's about the maintenance of goodwill, kind-heartedness. Number four, love is about adding to the joy and fulfillment in the lives of others. Adding to the joy and fulfillment in the lives of others. A person walking in love is someone I will call a major joy contributor. A major joy distributor. Adding to the joy and fulfillment in the lives of others. That was what this man, the Samaritan did. You know, there are people 
that people encounter. And what they do for you is to take away your joy. Have you encountered such people before? Take away your pain, your, your fulfillment. You were happy before you met them. Those are the wicked agents of the earth. Wicked robbers. Wicked killers. Wicked thieves. Carry the man's bag containing the phone that has all the contacts. Containing all documents that are relevant. He left people without joy. What a life. And what you give to others determines what God will give to you in this life and in the life to come. Ask yourself the question. All the people around you, are you contributing to their joy? Or you are contributing to their sorrow or pain? Is your wife happier because he married you? Or she has become a shadow of your, of herself since you came into her life? Is your husband more excited because you are his wife? Or is afraid of returning back home every day because of what is waiting for him at home? Okay? We'll continue from where we stopped yesterday. So where is the money now? I say, where is the money? We'll continue. There are, there are some, there are some, some human beings, it looks like they sell in their body. Instead of being, instead of being made up of chromosomes, it's quarrelsome. Troublesomes. It permanent, they are just, they are not happy if things are normal. This house has been quiet for the last five days. Let's make some trouble. Ask yourself that question. Is my wife a happier person today than she was 26 years ago? Is she a shinier person? Are my children happy? Are my friends and associates happy? Or somebody, what are you adding to the lives of people? Is it a measure of what love you are walking in? What are you adding to the lives of people? Love is about adding. And if you are here today, or listening to the sound of my voice, and your existence is all about taking joy from people, it's all about baptizing others with sorrow by your life, by your actions, by your activity, whether you are at the leadership level of, of, of the nation, or at the whatever level you are, or whether you are an outright criminal, this is a warning from heaven to you. The sorrow you are giving to others, you will reap it in this world. Your generations will reap it, and you will continue it in hell, except you repent. What is love all about? Number five. I have eight points today. We'll continue next Sunday. Love is about making a positive difference in the lives of others. Making a positive difference in the lives of others. Like this Samaritan made in the life of this man. See, something became different because of you. Something, something became different because of you. Something became different because of you. Because of you. Because of you. Somebody told me the other day, he said, I, I, I know how I, my life used to be before I came in contact with you. He said, I will borrow to pay this house rent. And then, continue to borrow until the next house rent. And I have not yet paid what I borrowed to pay the last house rent. And then the new house rent has come. Now, it's not only paying house rent effortlessly. He's building a house of his own. In the purpose of contact is impact. Meaningful, positive impact. The purpose, the reason why God will bring anybody in contact with you, the purpose of contact is positive impact. 
contact without impact is a waste. Making a post. There are people who make a difference in your life, but it is negative. Like the man who gave his wife a black eye. Who, 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 who left a knife cut or a cut on the body. There is a difference made, but it's a negative difference. Question is, everybody is making a difference in somebody's life. The question is, what difference are you making? Is it a positive difference or a negative difference? While I was preparing this message, I said, when we were children, we used to hear stories about this Samaritan. Why is it we don't hear it these days? Because emphasis is so different. Everybody is pursuing money or pursuing this or pursuing that. Nobody cares for the other. Making, when last did you make, did you touch somebody's life until they were moved to tears? A positive difference in the lives of others. Number six, love is about doing good for others without expecting repayment. Doing good for others without expecting repayment. It is about doing good for others without expecting rewards in return. You are not doing because you are expect. This man is wounded. He is lying on the floor. I am not expecting him to do anything for me. It is about doing good for others without expecting repayment, without expecting rewards in return. The Holy Ghost said something very funny to me while I was preparing this message. He said, when you do things for people because of what they can pay you, that is not love action. That is business transaction. The only reason why you did something for that person is because of what that person can do for you in return. You have not demonstrated a love action. You have just functioned in a business transaction. There are so many people in business transactions doing things for people that they think they can get things out of and they call it love action. Love is about doing things for people. You, no, you can do things for people who have substance. They have need in one area or the other. But when this person is in no position to do anything in return, that is when love is really love. Number seven. Love is about interrupting your schedule or journey to pay attention to someone in need. You, you, you interrupted your j- j- schedule. You interrupted your j- journey to pay attention to somebody in need. Every every reasonable person has a schedule of life. You set aside your schedule every once in a while to pay attention to the desperate situations of others. Desperate situation. You set aside the schedule. I was meant to be on a business appointment now. But somebody is dying. A few days ago, one one of us was in a hospital. And they called me from that hospital. And they said, um, this man is, please, please speak life to this man. Speak life. So they gave me the phone. As I was speaking his voice, he was literally not even responding to what I was saying. I said, leave, leave, leave in the name of Jesus. Leave. And then I called my wife. She was somewhere in town. And I said, ma, so and so person, one of us is right in so and so hospital now, uh, around the Garki area. I want you to pass through there now. She said, okay, I will. I said, oh, do you think I should come myself? She said, no, let me go first. So she went there. She had a schedule. She was coming from somewhere and going somewhere. When she met the man, he was gone, literally gone. Doctors were battling to put IV line to hydrate him, battling to give, give oxygen. And Dr. Miss Enenche, one good her way, pushed all of them aside. They couldn't find the, 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 the line. Pushed all of them aside. 
I said, give me the needle. Give me the syringe. Tie the hand. Do everything. Pushing one dial. The line was in the vein. Began to hydrate the man. And the doctor, who, is, who must have been a doctor of almost 40 years, said, you still remember medicine like this? This is line that we are struggling with. We just put it one dial. Long story made short, the, 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 the line was flowing. Oxygen had been fixed. She was there doing all these things. They went to check and realized the man was in diabetic ketoacidosis. He was already in diabetic coma. With a blood sugar that is more than 10 times normal. Yes, more than 10 times normal. And they didn't know they were treating something else. Yesterday I saw the man. Life. Life. That was scheduled, interrupted. Driving on the road. Don't come here. Don't move. Go bright, move to that hospital. Now. Am I communicating at all? What, that lady that spoke from America. Do you remember her? Dr. Stella Emanuel. The one who spoke about um, hydroxychloroquine. That everybody went haywire. We were speaking the other day and she told me how they interviewed her. And she said, they asked her that supposing the Texas Medical Board withdraws your certificate for trying to prescribe a drug that has been prescribed. Prohibited. And she said, number one, the drug is not prohibited except for emergency use. Number two, between losing my license and saving a life, which one should I choose? He silenced the interviewer. Between losing my license and saving a life, what should I choose? The answer is obvious. Let the license go. Let the life be saved. They wrote petitions to the board, the medical board, and the medical board came out and said, the doctor did nothing wrong and certificate is intact. When was the last time you, you paused to attend to somebody? We live in a world that is too hurry and too... We are so focused on ourselves, myself, me, my wife, my children. I have an appointment. You can explain the appointment to the appointee or to the appointer. While I was coming, somebody was about to die. And I branched. Even if it was a contract of a hundred billion. Somebody was about to die. And I have to stop and attend to the person. I am sorry. And if they say the contract is cancelled, say thank you so much. I have no regrets. This month I want us to hear some things. And I want us to move into some practical things. The whole world is upside down. Because nobody cares for nobody. Nobody is interested in nobody. Nobody is paying. A man didn't know that the wife was dying until the wife had almost 48 hours to leave. They were living in the same home. She had a terminal affliction. He was not aware. And they were not talking to each other as they should because there was a stranger in between, a strange woman in between. The man said, let me just let you go. Let me let you go. Hey, all the property I have, anything you want, take out of it so that you can go. Let me go my way. The woman said, just carry me in your hand. The way you carried me on my wedding day. Lift me in your hand for 30 days. After that, I'll let you go. And the man did that for about 30 days. Before 30 days will resume, will, will expire. The man began to bond with his wife. It was then that the wife told him, and then after the 30 days expired, it was time for the woman to die. Because that was the time the doctors gave her. But she said she did that so that she wouldn't die with bitterness. So that her bond. It was at the tail end that the man discovered that this woman has a terminal disease. He was not aware. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's the kind of world we live in. Where your, your, your neighbor has a challenge. You, somebody is not smiling. You didn't ask. Somebody is looking. The other day I saw a young lady. You remember the, 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 the one? I saw her that. I said, what is wrong with you? Shrunk. 
almost mind off. See, this is not normal. Mother is concerned. Everybody is concerned. This is not normal. Go on this kind of message prescription and rescue your life. Please. I know you are in a hurry, but slow down a little bit and pay attention to somebody. You may save a life. You may prevent somebody from committing suicide. Slow down a little bit. You may, you may deliver somebody from a wrong relationship, a wrong business transaction. If the Samaritan was as in a hurry as the priest and just going like the Levite, that man would have been dead forever. But he slowed down. Slow down. I said, alright, let me hear what you are saying. Tell me what is going on. And that saved the whole life. I speak and prophesy to somebody today. The grace to love like God is released upon you. That grace is released upon you. Finally, I don't know whether I'm, I'll finish this thing today. Number eight. Love is about coming down. Coming to the level of others in order to bring them up. Coming to the level of others where necessary in order to bring them up. Bring them up where? Bring them to your level or bring them out of affliction. Coming down. Coming or going to the level of others in order to bring them up. The man, the Bible said, he came down from his beast. He was on a beast. The other guy was on the floor. I'm sure you saw it in the scripture. He came down. Many of us, we are too high up. Once in a while, come down. He came down. He came down. Coming to the level of others, where necessary. To bring them up. Your father may be illiterate. But he gave birth to you. The other day I gathered family members, extended family members, and people that are I'm related, connected, associated from a very large family. Many of them I don't know them. Many of them I don't know their fathers. If I saw them on the road, I will never know them. And what is the plan? To help as many people up as possible, to assist as many possible, and the first assistance was the assistance with salvation. The next assistance was assistance with deliverance. Take a three-day fast, all of you. And I'll take you up to the altar and break every yoke and everything that followed you and followed your father's house and break every yoke. Some of them are mechanics, some are security men, some are this and some are that. And we're there. You was your own father. Oh, my father is somebody, somebody, the son of somebody, somebody. Oh, I, I, I used to hear the name. <laughs> You, we try our best to bring ourselves. You are on a beast. Try and come down once in a while. We are riding too high. Try come down once in a while. My time is up. These eight things we will continue next Sunday with number nine. But, what is the way of love? And I may stop there. How do we walk in love? Number one, love is the nature of God. The meaning of that is, the closer you walk with God, the more of his nature you manifest. The closer with God we walk, the more of his nature we will manifest. The closer, First John 4, 8. Draw me nearer, nearer to thee, Lord. Draw me nearer, nearer to thee. My song every day, Father, draw me nearer, oh Lord, draw me nearer, nearer to thee. My 
my song every day. My song every day. Father, draw me nearer. Oh Lord, draw. So love is the nature of God. How do you walk in love? The closer you go. If you claim to be a Christian, but you don't love people, you may be religious, but you are not spiritual. Number two, love is not just an emotion. Love is a decision. It's not just about what you feel. It's what you will. Uh, so it's not a matter of I feel for, I, I mean I, 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 I love my wife because she's beautiful, because she's this or that. Or I love my husband because she's provided. It's not, it's not an emotion. Emotion belongs to the realm, ordinary emotion belongs to the realm of infatuation. The things of the lost and all that. Emotion is part of it. But it is a decision. Where there is an emotion without decision, it will end in frustration. A decision. Thou shalt love. is a choice. Mark chapter 12 verse 32. Thou shalt love. You love your neighbor. You love yourself from the 30, from verse 28 to verse 30, 30, 30. It's a decision. Mark 12, 28. You shall love the Lord your God. You shall love. You shall love. You, you make your choice. It is my choice to love my wife, to love my children, to love people, and to, and to, and to love above all my maker is a choice. And it is clear that people make choices and choices make people. You see, you're having a marital problem. Make the choice to love your wife. You're having, having a problem with your, your, your siblings. Make the choice to love each other. Make the choice. And finally, love is a spiritual fruit that is subject to growth and development. It's a spiritual fruit. Galatians 5.23 The fruit of the Spirit is love. Probably from, start from verse 21. But, 22, but the fruit of the spirit is love. It is a spiritual fruit. It is subject to growth and development. So love grows. You practice it unto growth. You exercise it unto growth. You start from where you are. Every time you do the right thing where love is concerned, you are growing it. Time comes when your capacity for love becomes mega. Mega. Because you are practicing it. I have more to say. But we'll leave the rest till midweek and coming Sunday. This is what we'll be dealing with throughout the month. Supernatural shift by the character of love. Moving to the next level. Maybe by the midweek service we'll look at men and women that shifted in life and in various realms. On the frequency of love. You are blessed. Hearing what you are hearing. I know you are already blessed. Will you stand on your feet to the shout of victory? A louder shout of victory. Take your seat one minute. Because you stood up very sluggishly. And now stand again with a louder shout of victory. Loud most shout of victory. Hallelujah. Is somebody blessed? Who? Who? Who else? Is, are things going to change around your life? Are you going to start practicing from now on? Alright, lift up your hands and give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise. Give him the praise.
Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In my heart. In my in my heart, in my Lord, I want to be like Jesus in my heart. In my heart, in my heart, in my heart. Oh Lord, Lord. I want to be like Jesus. We are going to do this very rapidly for the sake of time. Lift up your hands everywhere you are. And say after me, say, Lord Jesus, I thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Thank you for your help for me today. Thank you, Lord, for opening up to me the principle of love the power of love I receive your help I receive your mercy to walk in that love thank you Lord in Jesus precious name wherever you are I'm going to lead in prayer everyone that is here today and everyone watching from all around the world we are in prayers. You are going to pray with me for everyone who needs to surrender their lives to Jesus. You want your sins forgiven. You want today to mark a new day for you. Pray after me. Galleries everywhere around the world and say after me, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner in need of help. Come into my life. Make me a new person. Today I have decided to follow you, Lord. No turning back. From today, forward ever, backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. Everywhere you are, you pray that prayer. And even if you didn't pray that prayer, but you need your sins forgiven. You need Jesus in your life. You want to com completely surrender your life to Jesus for today to mark a new day quickly pick your bibles and your bags and rush to the frontier and we shall receive you quickly do so quickly pick your bibles and your bags and rush to the frontier and we shall pray for you lord i give you my heart give you the count of seven rush forward quickly one i'll live for you So, I live for you alone. I live for you alone. Every moment I'm away. Keep coming, keep coming. And everyone also, you want your sins, addictions broken. You want to rededicate your life to Jesus. There is a lifestyle you are not happy with. There is a way of living you are not happy with. Quickly rush to the front also and we shall pray for you. I've got my mind made up. Take that. I've got my mind made up. Because, because, because I want to see my Jesus someday. I've got my mind. I've got my mind made up. And I will turn Because, because, because I want Blessed be your name. 
in the precious name of Jesus. Those of you in the front, place your right hand on your chest and say this prayer after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today to surrender my life to you. I am a sinner in need of help. Come into my life, make me a new person. Today I have decided to follow you, Lord. No turning back. Forward ever. Backward never. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name. Amen. I pray for you today. I declare the hold of the enemy broken. I declare a new season for you. Help from above is released upon you. I call it done. In Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right. Counsel us. You will go. All right. Everybody stretch your two hands in front of you. Let's take this out of the way and then we'll go into the blessing. I ask for the blessing of God upon your hands. Your resources will look for you from the north, the south, and the east and the west. All that is yours is coming your way and no devil shall take it back. This month of September, your resources shall rush in your direction. In Jesus' name, I call it dawn. Give the Lord the praise and take your seat. I'm a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Cancel us. All things are passed away. I'm born again. Father, I can't get on. That's who I am. I'm a new creation. Everybody see. I'm a new creation. Lift up your offerings. Father, multiply harvest back to every giver that the hands lifted will never drop to bear. I declare multiplied harvest from the north, the south, the east, and the west in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Hallelujah. Pass it on. Just one minute. I want to let us all know we're about to step into the release of the blessing in a few minutes and we shall be true. But I want us to know that one of the triggers of the blessing is called the tight. Every blessing service is to remind you of the supernatural supply connection through the tight and the offerings. It changes your life. It changes your financial level and everything. Be reminded and it's not what you do occasionally that changes your life, but what you do habitually. And the Lord bless you. The response to us, the broadcast seed is very, very good so far. And we trust the Lord that nobody who is committed in that service will ever lose their reward. God will cause, you, cause your voice to be heard in your generation. And for those who are not yet involved, queue in immediately. And for every faithful giver in this assembly, in terms of fighting, in terms of seed sowing and sacrifices, I prophesy upon your life, the heavens open over your life. The heavens open over your life. When men are cast down, you shall say there is a lifting up. You will never know a better yesterday. This September is your month. I call it done in Jesus' precious name. Lights are on the screen for those who are interested from the online place and the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Midweek service, we, shall, we are shifting in levels and looking at the supernatural shift that has been occasioned by love. Next Sunday, we continue on this subject. And then we are resuming with the Dunamis Home, Ch Dunamis home Church. Are you excited? Woo! Give the Lord a shout of praise. A loud shout of praise. That devil is a liar. That devil is a liar. That devil is a liar. Corona drivers will not drive us from the home church. All we need to do is to apply all the cautions that has been put in place and just the way we come to church and we do all of that and we believe that if people are mingling together with each other in the markets and mingling together at the beer palace and mingling together at the supermarkets and mingling together everywhere, 
that the protective power of God that has helped us so far, that protective power will protect us in the homes. You believe that shout the loudest, amen. You know, there are some demons and their agents who predicted that when churches open, then disaster will happen. Has it happened to them or the devil? It happened in the camp of the devil. And so, details will be wrapped up within a week, and then not this Saturday, but then the upper one will then commence. Is somebody excited? Give the Lord a big clap, and I believe that we shall still achieve our target for 2020 through the home church. The, 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 the month of the spirit, the messages are all available, and for your spiritual growth and revival, you pick them up. Now, we are taking position for the communion and getting set for the blessing. Today, because of, of the time taken, we will release the blessing upon you and pray upon the communion which you will receive and then you take it on your way. That is perfect. Lift up your right hand and just begin to give him the praise for what you are about to receive. While the praise is on. Celebration. You are God. You are not just me. yet received, I am sure they will soon be with you. Lift it up. What will be proclaimed will be stepping into that communion. Please, if you are here for the first time, apart from those who already came out for the altar call, today is your first time in Dynamics, quickly step forward here so that we can proceed immediately after the blessing release. Everyone who is here for the first time next Sunday, we are moving to a higher level of this same unction in the world. And I believe that the Lord will give us a fresh grace. First time as you step forward and receive your own communion in the front here. While they are doing that, lift the, the communion in one hand and place your hand on your chest or on your forehead with the other hand to receive the blessing. Father, we give you the praise. The Bible said on this wise shall the priest bless the people. And that is the blessing that is being released now. And it's a new day. We declare the blessing of God upon you this month in the name of Jesus. I kept on hearing the name snail poor. I don't know what it is. Whether you are poor by reason of the activities of snail spirits 
or whatever, today we declare that yoke on your life is broken in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every limitation arrested in the name of Jesus. This morning, we declare upon you the blessings of the pap, the blessings of the womb. We declare today that you are hereby blessed to be distinguished in the name of Jesus. Where others are sitting, you shall stand. Where others are standing, you shall walk. Where others are walking, you shall run. Where others are running, you shall overtake in the name of Jesus. I declare today, the favor of God engulfs you. The mercy of God preserves you. The love of God calls you to be distinguished in Jesus' name. In Jesus' precious name. I prophesy based on that which has been released for this month, number one, that in this month of September, the ninth month, which is the month in which delivery happens yes, after conception, yes, 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 yes. I prophesy in this month, right you shall month. experience the full delivery of the plans and purpose of God Amen. for your life, for our nation, Amen. for 2020 in the name of Jesus. Amen. Number two, this month you shall experience the full delivery of your expectations for 2020. Amen. The full delivery of your expectations for this year. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This month you shall experience the explosion. It was in the ninth hour that Paul and Paul, Peter and John went to the temple in the ninth hour and the crippled man, crippled from his mother's womb, walked. Yes. In this ninth month, you shall experience the explosion of the supernatural yes, 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 yes. that will dissolve and break every age-long calamity that has followed your life. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. In the ninth hour, Cornelius encountered an angel yes. with a divine encounter that opened the door of the Gentiles. I prophesy, in this ninth month, you shall experience Explosive divine encounters. Amen. Explosive divine visitations. Amen. That will open diverse doors. Yes, yes, in the yes. name of Jesus. Amen. The Lord said I should share, show you number five. This month. You shall experience the reward of your commitment. Amen. The reward of your faithfulness. Amen. The reward of your commitment Amen. to God. The reward of your faithfulness. In the name of Jesus. Sixthly. I prophesy the release of grace Amen. for a closer working relationship with God. Amen. Grace for a closer working relationship with God is released upon you. Amen. Seven, I prophesy the reversal of the arrows of strange disease Amen. and sudden death. Amen. Every arrow of strange disease, every arrow of sudden death is retrieved and refired back to senders. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Finally, any curse placed on your life, ancestral curse, generational curse, family curse, witchcraft curse, occultic curse, any curse placed on you by your father or your mother or by from any source in this seventh, ninth month, I prophesy the reversal of every curse. Amen. The reversal of every curse. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. This month shall favor you. Yes. There is instant healing from diabetes right now. There is somebody that is being disconnected from a toxic relationship. A relationship that is not in the interest of your life and on your, of your destiny. It's being broken off right now. Somebody is moving to another level. And this communion is called the cup of the blessing. Yes. It is blessed Amen. in the name of the Father Amen. and of the Son Amen. and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. And the Lord bless you. Amen. And the Lord keep you. Amen. And the Lord cause His face to shine upon Amen. you and be gracious unto you Amen. from this day and forevermore. Amen. And the grace of our Lord Jesus and the love of God and the fellowship of the Spirit be with us now forevermore. Amen. Amen. Open that communion and take it right now. Ensure you take it before you step out of the whole of the premises. Open it, open it, open it. Be flat. Mm. Yes. The Lord bless you. Adonai keep you. El Shaddai make his face to shine upon you. The Lord bless you. I am that I am keep you. Adonai make his face 
to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and be gracious unto you the Lord lift up his countenance on you and give you peace in everything you do I say the Lord bless you bless you bless you bless I keep you oh Adonai make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you and be and be and be gracious unto you the Lord lift us he his countenance on you and give and give you peace the Lord give you peace the Lord give you peace if you came late for the last service and sure you wait for this second service or you came for this service and sure you are there for the service you came for God bless you. Those in the front here, we appreciate your coming. We believe that God brought you for good. And we know you are not going back the same way you came. Please let us know how we may be of help to you. You have any question, you want to let us know. And we'll trust God to ask, answer the questions as God helps us. God bless you. And God keep you. Cause his face to shine upon you. In Jesus precious name. Please, our officers are here. And they will speak with you. They will lead you. Have a little package for you. And if you have any question, you ask them and they will let us know. You have any prayer requests, you let them know. They will also let us know. Once again, thank you for coming and God bless you in Jesus' name.